Oh man, I am so excited for this video today, guys. This has been a long time coming. We talked first about how when you invest in quality individual dividend stocks, over time, the power of reinvesting your dividends and the compounding that happens is so significant and leads to ever increasing, always sustaining dividend income for life. And then we talked about how these same dividend stocks, quality dividend stocks, compared to the S&P 500 just completely blows the S&P 500 out of the water. And then we took that model portfolio and put it up against three different dividend ETFs, Vanguard's High Yield Dividend ETF, their Dividend Appreciation ETF, and Noble's S&P 500 Dividend Aristocrats ETF. And we found that the model dividend portfolio didn't quite perform as well, or at least didn't always outperform. And then we compared 11 different dividend ETFs, and I told you in that video, I told you that I was gonna take the time necessary and it was a long time. To take my exact portfolio right now, all 19 dividend stocks that I own, and I would look at the price history, all of it built into a spreadsheet, and I would take the dividend growth rates of all that, and then once I've got all that information, how does it perform? Make sure to stick around all the way to the end of this video, guys. I think you are gonna be surprised and maybe even shocked at the results here. We're throwing in my average Joe investor dividend portfolio of, of quality individual dividend stocks compared to 11 different dividend ETFs and the S&P 500. What more could you possibly ask for? Baby Yoda's got his trumpet. I'm not sure why, but he's ready to go. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let's get started. Hey guys, before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button below the video to ensure you do not miss any future videos I post. Make sure to leave a comment below saying you subscribed and I promise to respond personally to your comment. All right guys, you know how much I value your time and I will not waste a single moment of it. If you're interested in my Patreon community where I can give you a monthly dividend stock spreadsheet and more dividend content than you get here on the channel, hit the link in the description below and get started for as low as $5 a month. All right, I'm done, let's jump right into the content. All right guys, so here is my dividend portfolio. I can show you to you in fidelity, but these are the exact 19 different dividend stocks that I own in my portfolio. For the purposes of this video, I'm not gonna hit you with a description of every single different dividend stock I own. I'm not gonna explain them all to you, um, but this spreadsheet will be available as part of my Patreon community if you're interested. And you can always check out some of my other videos which show this dividend, dividend portfolio in more detail. But I'll just name them off for you here. I've got Eris Capital Corporation, which is a business development company. Company, ticker symbol ARCC. I've got Westlake Chemical Partners, WLKP, Valero Energy Corporation, VLO, Star Group Unit, SGU, ABV, ABBV, Unum Group, UNM, Realty Income Corporation, O, Store Capital Corporation, STOR, First of Long Island Corporation, FLIC. That one was a member of the model portfolio we used. Then I've got Gilead Sciences, G-I-L-D, Walgreen Boots Alliance, another member of the model portfolio, WBA, MSC Industrial Direct, MSM, UGI Corporation, UGI, Regions Financial Corporation, RF, Genuine Parts, GPC, Broadcom, AVGO, PepsiCo, PEP, Johnson & Johnson, J&J, &J, and the McDonald's Corporation, MCD. Some of these companies have a high dividend yield. Some of them have a much more conservative dividend yield. They range in dividend histories from five years, 10 years, up to 64 years with genuine parts. I've got a lot of diversity in my portfolio, and if you're interested in more about what I, how I came to pick these different dividend stocks, I'm more than happy to break that out in a, in a long and detailed video for you guys. So make sure to let, let me know in the comments below if that would be something you're interested in, why I picked these stocks and the rules and the criteria by which I picked dividend stocks. I know that some people have mentioned that they're interested in that. What we did here is we took the price history. You can see all the top tabs down here. For each one of these different dividend stocks, I created a tab and I built in the price history from Yahoo Finance for every single one of them. It took a while. As you can see here, a tab for every one of them. ARCC, WLKP, VLO, SGU, ABBV, UNM. Every single one of them here has a breakout of their price history as far back as it goes. So the ones that have a price history previous to 1985, Yahoo Finance caps it at 1985. So the the price history and the average annual returns go from 85 to 2021. And if it's shorter than that, then I go with the entire history of that dividend stock. The big components of what I took were the current dividend payment, the annual dividend payment. In addition, I took at the monthly price history for as far back as it goes in Yahoo Finance. And then I grabbed the annual returns for every single year and I took an average of that. And whatever that percentage was, I used it. Additionally, I looked at the dividend growth rates. Now, 
It's important to understand here, I, I took a little bit of liberty here because there were some dividend growth rates in my portfolio that were significant. They were to the moon, to quote uh, Wall Street bets. <laughs> but they were some that were like 30, 40, 50% because they're newer and they're growing a lot. But I know that's not sustainable. It would have resulted in the data being flawed. So anytime the dividend growth rate for any of these dividend stocks was above, um, I believe 12 or 13%, no matter what it was, I gave it a growth rate of 10%. I figure a company that's growing a lot right now would probably bring it down. And so I'm just trying to be very conservative with these results. So you can know that I wasn't just fudging the numbers here. If it was all the way to the moon, then I just took a dividend growth rate of 10%. Now the price history though, I went with the actual price history because I usually have for each one of these, I had at least eight, nine, 10 years. Otherwise though, I used Seeking Alpha's dividend growth rate, their compound annual growth rate or CAGR for short. Um, for each one of these dividend, different dividend stocks here, I would use the 10 year compound annual growth rate for each one of these stocks. If they have one, if they didn't have a 10 year growth rate yet, then I use the five year compound annual growth rate. Like again, again, capped though at 12%. If it was significant, I used 10%. Now for this test, what I also did was assumed for my portfolio, $400 a month was invested, just like the previous example so that we can compare them. And what I did here, and this is important, I'm gonna come back to this later at the end of the results. I assumed that I was spreading my $400 equally across all 19 different dividend stocks. You should know in my real portfolio, I don't do that. But for the sake of keeping it simple and just making it simple for you guys to understand, I went with equal weighting across all of them. And as you can see here, we're gonna look at columns U, V, and W to see how it results. How many shares were owned at the end of the period, which is 10 years, what the annual dividends were, meaning at the end of the 10 years, what was the trailing 12 months of dividend payments for the entire year and comparing that. And then also what is the holding value for each one of these individual dividend stocks. And then you'll see all the way at the bottom here, you can see totals that we're gonna come up with the total for our portfolio, the total against the SPDR S&P 500 ETF. And then furthermore, we're gonna look back at the 11 different dividend ETFs to see whether my portfolio beats the dividend ETFs or not. And hey, if I don't beat them, then I will acknowledge that and say, hey, maybe the best thing to do is to own dividend ETFs. Now again, we're making straight line assumptions here. And what I mean by that is, we don't know exactly what's gonna happen in the next 10 years. For all we know, all of my 19 different dividend stocks could implode. I don't think so because I've talked a lot about the metrics that I use and how I track my stocks to make sure I know before they get into too much trouble, but it could happen. The entire stock market could blow up. We could go into a significant recession. We could go on another 10 year bull market. We don't know exactly. So we used straight line assumptions, meaning that the price would go up based on the annual average appreciation. So if the annual appreciation was 12%, it would go up 1% every single month for the 10 years. Dividend growth rate, same thing, assuming it's gonna to continue to grow, whatever that percentage is, whether it's six, seven, eight, nine, 10%, we're just assuming that. That's all we can do when we talk about what we think is gonna happen in the future. And lastly, we're assuming that the contributions we make to the portfolio are gonna grow by 3%, the cost of living adjustment, 3% every single year. So portfolio would get $400 in the first 12 months and then $412, I believe, for the next 12 months and then so on and so forth. All right, guys, what would have actually happened based on our assumptions? I'm not gonna keep you in suspense any longer. We're looking at the average Joe Investor portfolio that I actually hold with Fidelity. What would happen? Here are the share zone. You can see here that there are a significant number of shares in a few of them, including Ares Capital, Westlake Chemical, and Star Group Unit. Let's take a look here first at the annual dividends. Again, this number I'm gonna show you right now is based on that 10th year after 10 years of growing the dividend, reinvesting, oh, by the way, we're reinvesting dividends. I'm assuming that you knew that, but I'm gonna make it clear right now. We're reinvesting dividends along the way. But this number we're gonna look at here is the annual dividends for that 10th year. How much in dividends were being paid in the previous trailing 12 months TTM for each one of these dividend stocks? And I'm adding them together. So that's the number you're seeing here for each one of these dividend stocks. Some of the outliers here, we've got Westlake Chemical paying $865. We've got Eris Capital paying 328. Uh, we've got Star Group paying 306. We've got over here is that Unum Group paying 365. We've also got 254 here being paid by MSC Industrial. The lowest numbers though being paid by Johnson & Johnson and McDonald's Corporation, 70 and 75. And then up here for $99, we've got Realty Income Corporation. All right, let's take a look at the holding value. For the holding value, this is at the end of 10 years, we're taking the number of shares owned and we're multiplying by whatever the price is based on our assumptions, again, straight line growth, so it's not perfect, but the number of shares held with each one of these dividend stocks multiplied by the share price at the end of 2031. Again, based on our assumptions. And here it is. We've got some outliers here. We have $12,000 for 
Gilead Science. We've got $9,448 for AbV. A lot of them fell in between here in the middle here, but we've also got $7,000 with Valero Energy Corporation. We've got a lower one here. Star Group Unit was at $4,688. We also had a few in the fives. Store Capital, Realty Income Corporation, uh, Ares Capital up top. But a lot of them fell in the $6,000, $7,000 range. All right, guys, let's take a look at the total here. What actually resulted? What is the total portfolio value? What is the total annual dividend income after the 10 years? Let's see it right here. Annual dividend income, $4,077.78. Total portfolio value, $124,845.77. And if some of you are racking your brain, those of you that have been watching this series, by, by the way, this is a series. If you, this is the first video you're seeing and you wanna watch from the beginning, I've created a playlist, I'm gonna right up here. So make sure you've got that access to it. I'll put a link to the description, to the playlist in the description below in case you wanna start from the beginning here. But don't worry, I'm gonna show you the 11 different dividend ETFs, but let's compare it first to the S&P 500 because I've had a few people say, you know what, Joe, I don't think you can beat the S&P 500 for your own portfolio, or you know, it's just safer to own the S&P 500. Well, let's take a look and see what would have happened based on our assumptions. For the S&P 500, I made the same assumptions. I used SPY because they had the longest price history for SPY, even though I know it has a slightly higher expense ratio. Not significant for the purposes of this review though. We use the annual price changes, the average of those, as well as the dividend growth rate after 10 years, which was about 9%. So what would have happened against SPY? Well, SPY would have had annual dividend income of only only $1,207.92. But then again, you were thinking all the time that SPY was not going to win the dividend battle here. They were gonna pay dividends, but their portfolio value, you were expecting the portfolio to do better. Well, did it? No, no it didn't. SPY got destroyed, not only by my model portfolio when I did that, this is only 10 years, but you can see here in the model portfolio, not only are we collecting almost four times as much dividend income every year, but because of all that reinvesting of dividends happening, it also significantly outperformed with the portfolio value. Over $25,000 more after 10 years, and that, that, that gap between them is going to widen as more time goes. If I were to show you 25 years here, holy smokes, we'd have a significant divide between these two portfolios. All right, $4,077.78 in annual dividend income, and total portfolio value, 124, 845, and 77 cents. Let's go ahead and pull up and look at the dividend ETF battle spreadsheet that I showed you in the previous video, all 11 different dividend ETFs, because we had the same metrics, 10 years, annual dividend income based on that 10th year and the portfolio value. Let's see which one came out ahead. Here you've got it, not a single one of these, and I'll even go to the five-year price history just for playing it safe here. We know that due to the bull run, it's unlikely that just using a five-year price history for any of these dividend ETFs would be fair, but I'll go ahead and look at there anyway. Here's all of them, not a single one did it. Not a single one of the different dividend ETFs as you can see here with the annual dividend income, none of them had 4,000. Some of them got a little close, 35, 34 here, including um, SCHD Schwab, the winner of this battle. Portfolio value, we did have one ETF based on a five year price history win the portfolio value over mine. 135 versus, as you can see here, 124. But again, if you factor in a 10 year price history, none of them did it. We had 117 for Schwab and 34. None of the different dividend ETFs, not a single dividend ETF beat my portfolio. Boom! Mic drop. I'm just joking, guys. I think that dividend ETFs are a great investment. And I think that if you're looking for dividend income, you don't have to pick quality individual dividend stocks. If you don't want to, you can be successful. We've proven you can be successful with dividend ETFs. And you can see here with these dividend ETFs, a lot of them beat the S&P 500. The S&P 500 had 1207 for the um, annual dividend income. And you can see here, over here we had uh, a number of them that beat the S&P 500. Some of them lagged the S&P 500 though. You can see we had this one here, which I believe was the S&P quality dividend ETF. And then portfolio value, a lot of them beat the S&P 500 as well. Not a lot, not all of them though. A few of them did not beat it. They underperformed. All right guys, so what's the takeaway here? Quality dividend stocks beat dividend ETFs and the S&P 500. And I think that a natural conversation to have after this type of video, which I wanna do in the next Friday video, is talk about how did I come to own these different 19 dividend stocks? Why did I choose them? There are hundreds of different dividend stocks that pay dividends. Some of them pay a lot higher dividends. Some of them pay lower dividends. Why did I pick these? 
What's the quality underlying data that told me these were the right ones to pick? That's coming in the next video. I'm gonna take the time to really dive deep and help you understand why I picked them, why I think they're great investments, and why you might find some just like these or others as well. I know some of you guys out there are actually modeling my portfolio as well. And just for your awareness, I'm not a financial advisor, though just between you and me, and I guess all of YouTube, I am on my process of actually becoming a registered investment advisor. But look for that video this coming Friday. Why did I pick the dividend stocks that I own and what is the underlying criteria that I use to pick quality dividend stocks? Make sure to leave your two cents in the comments below. Let me know where you shot. Did you guess right? Make sure to give me your feedback because I'm always open to your feedback. I want to know what I missed, what you think I could have done better, what you really liked, and what videos you want to see more of in the future because I don't want to make videos for me. I'm not the audience. I want to make videos for you guys. Make sure to leave your two cents in the comments below. And that's all I got for you guys. Have a great rest of your day. And please, during this pandemic, guys, please continue to stay healthy, both physically and financially. Have a good one.